out in the middle is uh, mechanically break down the bond between the galenus, phalaride, cup, pyrite, and the waste rock. So we go through a crusher into a series of grinding mills. We have a rod mill, and inside that rod mill are 16 and a half foot steel rods, about four inches in diameter. They will tumble around inside this mill as it turns and crush rock in between them. From there, the rock will go to a uh, set of cyclones. Basically, it's a cone-shaped separating device. The uh, feet will enter the cyclone tangentially. Heavier, bigger particles exit out the bottom of that cone. Lighter, smaller particles exit out the top side of that cone. Smaller stuff goes on the flotation process. What comes out the bottom of those cyclones goes into our ball mill to get reground. Ball mill is just like a rod mill, except you got steel balls inside. Steel balls are two inches in diameter. And hit them over there. You open up that door, Bob. Maybe. You know, we have a. <laughs> we have a little button. <laughs> thing we do here is all that fine material from our grinding circuit. It's mixed into slurry inside our grinding mills and we had our first stage of flotation chemicals. The material is pumped over here to our set of uh, lead roughers. We will float the lead and the copper together out of there. Uh, the way a flotation machine works is we add chemicals to the water and slurry a lot like uh, you add to your washing machine at home. These chemicals will coat the surface selectively of the uh, lead, zinc, and copper minerals make the surface of those minerals hydrophobic. So when we agitate that slurry and pump air through it, the minerals are going to stick to the air bubbles and float to the surface of those tanks out there. And that's what we'll see going on outside. We'll take a look at that here in a minute. At the same time, we add some more chemicals which will depress the zinc minerals and our lead ruffers out here because we don't want to float them. We're trying to separate them. So we'll float the lead and the copper over here. We'll have two stages of uh, cleaning what we call it. Uh, we're just floating them again, try to refine it, get a higher grade concentrate out of the rock. Well, it doesn't float over here. It's pumped over our zinc circuit. We add some chemicals to add this, to activate the surface of those zinc minerals in the same way. We've got a bank of flotation machines over here. We'll run them through there and float zinc minerals away from the waste rock. What goes out to the tail end of our zinc ruffers is tailings and goes pumped out to our tailings impoundment. All of our froth concentrates, well, they're basically a slurry, it kind of bubbles in it. It's about 10% solids. We can't sell that, so all that's pumped out to a thickener outside. It's basically a big settling tank. And we use a vacuum filter to separate that after it goes out through the thickeners. Any questions while I'm in here? What chemicals are in there? We'll use big words, little words, to use, Bob. <laughs> we use zinc sulfate, uh, sodium isopropyl xanthate, sodium cyanide inside the rod mill. That's the first stage of the reagents. We use a MIBC as our frother. It's actually kind of the soap suds that make the bubbles. Uh, xanthate would be a collector. It's, it sticks to the surface of your uh, lead, zinc, and copper minerals and makes them want to attach themselves to the air bubbles. Zinc sulfate is a depressant. What that does in our lead ruffers is sticks to the surface of those zinc minerals, makes that sur surface uh, hydrophilic, so it does not want to stick to your air bubbles. So that's what keeps the zinc so floating in the uh, lead ruffers out here. And after we get over to the, our zinc circuit, we add <coughs> copper sulfate, which uh, if you ever 
stick a nail or something in copper sulfate, you know how it gets a copper coating on the outside of it. it works the same way as the zinc minerals. And that copper coating will uh, allow the xanthate to stick to it and once again make the surface of those minerals stick to air bones. tank, water goes off the top, solid stuff comes out the bottom. For the uh, lead? Yep, for the lead. We've got a zinc thickener over there and a copper thickener over there. Well, we know we yeah. Get everybody, Get everybody out, out. It's not very exciting. <laughs> so this, this came from inside then out here? Yep, this is all that froth we all saw froth. coming off the lead <laughs> cleaners. It just pumped in in the middle. It there? pumped in in the middle. Right yeah. At the top or in the bottom? At the top. At the top. Okay. There's something they're stirring, right? Yeah, we've got the uh, called rakes inside there, which will rake all the solid stuff towards the center, where we can pump it out the bottom of these thickeners. Okay. of all the rock we mine is not contain any minerals we have to find a way to dispose of it and uh, here at Doe Run we do that using tailings impoundments. Uh, what we've done here is dammed off the far end of this valley. If you look at the other side of the dam it's probably 150 feet or so high right now so we got uh, 40 years worth of rock which is probably 60 or 70 million tons by this point. It's been piled up out here in the impoundment. When it comes time to uh, close down this mine, they'll uh, start draining some of the water off of it and try to plant some grass or other vegetation to keep any of that uh, tailings or chat from migrating. And basically, uh, uh, some of you looked at the uh, tailings box earlier inside the mill. That tailings is pumped up through these big black pipes you see down here. Uh, we have to vary where we put it around this impoundment. Uh, it some fills places, up? Because or... it fills up. Uh, at some places we end up having to pump it a mile and a quarter just to get where it's going. 